Number one, here we go. There we go. We're doing 4.3. Hey. All right. So, everybody good with what I've done so far? Cool. My mystery force is 2i, and the tension is our missing force, right? So, move everything over, and you get, let's see, subtract 2i, add 1j. There's your tension force. Make sense, you guys? I, uh, it just said find the tension. It didn't say what form to write it in. So you could write it in unit vector notation, or you could find the magnitude of it. It's root 5, and then find the angle. It turns out to be, I think, 63 degrees. Cool? Any problems with number one? All right, number two. You've got a high wire. So here's our dude. Standing on a wire. And the question wants to know about the tension in the wire. So, uh, so uh, it's multiple choice. So A, approximately W, B, W over 2, C, much less than W, D, much more than W, or E, it depend or depends whether it stands on one or two feet. So first of all, it's not E. <laughs> okay? Uh, so, um, what do we got? We, is it A? Because it's got the tension's got to be enough to support his weight, which I don't know why they used W. But so here's our force of gravity. It's for whatever reason W. So is the tension equal to W? No. 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 Okay. So it's got to be half of W, right? Because it's split in two directions. No. Nope. No. Also, right? This is what I was trying to show you guys yesterday when I had I don't remember who it was Sebo and Adam I think were pulling the rope and I was pushing down in the middle, right? Yep. Okay? And the point is that this tension is way, way bigger than the force of gravity, right? Because there's tension at two ends. And each end, the vertical component supports the... So here's the vertical component of my tension. It's half of the weight, right? Same thing over here. The vertical component of my tension is half of the weight, right? But because this angle is so very small, my tension has got to be giant to give you that, right? Yep. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. If you are not completely understanding this, here's a quick activity you can do at home or if there's time at the end of the hour. So take a thing and tie it to two strings. You don't even need the spring scales. All right? So right now, so th these are the weights we used yesterday, right? So it's like 1.3 kilograms, right? So the force of gravity on this is about 13 newtons, right? And so right now, that 13 newtons is being supported by two strings that are basically vertical, right? Mm -hmm. So if you read the scales, both of these scales are at about 6.5 newtons. Okay? Because right now, all of the force pretty much is vertical, right? Mm -hmm. But what if I try to do this? Okay? So right now, I'm pulling with way more force than I'm here. Like, this is easy. If I do this all day, it's going to get tired. Okay? Because I'm, some of my force is horizontal, right? And that horizontal force, I'm basically just pulling against myself, right? So it's sort of wasted force. You know what I mean? Like I'm applying horizontal force to, for no gain. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So it's just the vertical force that supports it. Cool? All right. Next time you're at a playground, I want you guys to do this. Find a monkey bar that you can hang from. Hang by your arms like this, OK? Then try to put your arms far apart and hang from the monkey bars. It's way harder. Okay? Like way harder. Okay? Because now the tension in your arms is much bigger, right? Because there's only a small component of your force that's vertical. Okay? Alright. Questions of that? Okay. Um, number three. Three. Do you guys understand that all three drawings in number three are the same? Right? Drawing number one, you've got a thing hanging from a string. Right? So the, what is it? the salami is pulling down with a force of 
11, 11 kilograms, which is not a force, so that's about 110 newtons, right? So the salami is pulling down to the force of 110 newtons, so the string, the scale is going to read 110 newtons, right? All right, but I want you guys to be aware of something. What am I doing with my hand? Pulling up with 110 newtons, right? Uh, I wouldn't call it a normal force because it's not a contact force. It's a, I mean, well, I guess technically there's a normal force between my finger and the hook. So, that's okay, yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So do you guys agree that I'm pulling up with 110 newtons? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why doesn't that make, if I've got 110 newtons here and 110 newtons here, this is still 110 newtons, right? It's not like you add them and get 220. Do you know what I mean? Good? All right. So then B is the exact same thing, except we're running it over a pulley. But it's still 110 newtons, right? Follow? So it's 110 for both? Mm -hmm. oh. Do you understand where I'm getting 110, you guys? Wait, it's actually 11 times 9.8. I'm just being lazy. So yeah, so whatever 11 times 9.8 is. 107. 107 point whatever. All right, are we good? Yeah. Marco, are you good? Margaret, sorry? Yeah. Everybody happy? All right, so then the third one, all you're doing is instead of holding the other end of the pulley by tying it to the wall, you're holding the other end of the pulley by tying another sausage to it, OK? But it's still the same amount of force, right? Does that make sense? So and B are the same. All three of them are the same. All three of them are literally the same thing. So look, so here's the scale. They're all 107 newtons, or whatever it is. Yeah. All right. So look, you guys. So here's A, right? So here's the stupid salami, right? So let's think about the forces that are acting on the scale. There's 107 newtons pulling it down from gravity, right? But there's got to be another force above the scale, otherwise the scale would be falling, right? So there must also be 107 newtons up. Cool? Do you guys all agree that's A? OK. B is that, right? So there's 107 newtons pulling the salami down. So there's 107 newtons pulling the scale forward. Why isn't the scale moving? It's tied to the wall. So the wall must be pulling back with 107 newtons. And so what does the scale read? 107 newtons. Good? Now in C, all we've done is in C, it's the exact same as B, except now there's two salamis and a scale in the middle, right? So how hard is this salami pulling on the scale? 107 newtons. How hard is this salami pulling on the scale? 107 newtons negative, right? Why isn't this zero? All I've done here is I've replaced the wall with another salami. I know, but my salami. The spring scale doesn't care what's holding it at rest. Okay, fine. Right? Do you know what I mean? Like whether it's tied to a wall or to another salami or I'm physically holding it, it's all the same. Okay? So remember, you guys, the spring scale measures how hard you're pulling it sort of on one end. Okay? Oh, so the tension in a rope is the force at one end. So the spring scale is not like those scales where we have one force pulling it this way with this? So there, because I thought the spring scale you were meant It's exactly this. the same. It's one of these. So it's... So if you hold it at this end and hold it at this end, the Here. spring scale... Here, do it. No, okay. not, not this end. I thought we were hold, you were holding this end and I'm holding this end. Well, that doesn't exactly. do anything. Exactly. That's what I thought you meant. Oh, I see. No, I, well, that I think, doesn't I think anything. Exactly. I, that's why I thought it would be, I thought it'd be attached to that point. I gotcha. So okay. yeah. no, so these, these spring scales are unusual that they have two, two options, you know? Like a traditional, quote unquote, spring scale looks like 
this, where there's a little slidey dude in it. Good? All right, everybody happy? Yes. Good? So, night, you guys good? This is not me. It's a genuine night, you guys good? Yes. Everybody's happy? Anybody unhappy? No, I wasn't calling you out. I was just making sure you were good. Everybody's happy? All right. Um, number four. All right, oops. So number four, am I safe in assuming I should go over this one? Yes. The insect? Okay, so check it out, you guys, look. So here's the deal. So here's the insect, right? And he's got these legs that he's... He's got these legs that he's using to hold himself onto a, a wire or something, right? So here's the tension from one of those legs. Here's the tension from the other leg, right? It doesn't matter. All right, are we good? Yes. Everybody understands what's going on? Yes. Okay, now, what is each of the... Well, how many legs does he have? Six. Six. And therefore, each leg is supporting one-sixth one of his weight, right? Yep. So, here is the deal. My net force is the force of gravity plus the force of tension one plus the force of tension two plus force of tension six, right? Follow? Let's assume that all those tensions are the same. So now my net force is the force of gravity plus six times the force of the tension, right? And I'm being a little bit sloppy here because not all of the tensions are actually equal, right? But what's going to happen to the x components of all my tension forces? They have to cancel out, right? So all I really care about is the vertical components, right? Yes. So let me pause there. I, that was a big jump. Is everybody okay with why I chose to ignore the x components of everything? Yes. The only horizontal forces are tension forces. And we know the bug is not moving horizontally. Therefore, the horizontal net force has got to be zero. So all I care about is the verticals, right? Cool? All right. So um, that means then that my net force vertically is zero. My force of gravity in the y direction uh, plus 6fy, right? Everybody good? All right, so what that means then is that my force of tension in the y direction has got to be 1 6th the force of gravity. All right, so let me pause there for a minute. Is everybody good up to there? Yes. All right, so let's draw that tension force. So here's the bug again. Here's my tension force. Okay, that tension force has two components. There's force of tension in the x direction, which I don't care about force of tension in the y direction, which I do care about. Good? Yes. Mr. Hecker, I just didn't see the part where it said six legs. That would be problematic. I didn't hear it. One leg. Didn't. So we saw it was like, two legs? No. Oh, I have an insight. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, that's all right. a weird bug. <laughs> all right, are we all good? So this has got to be one-sixth, shh. This has got to be one-sixth FG, right? All right, so you guys, we got other stuff to get through, and we got you know whatever 25 minutes here. So, all right. Um, so A says, what's the ratio of the tension in each tibia? So we're looking for the ratio of this to the force of gravity, right? So let's come up with an expression for this thing. So we know that this angle here is 40 degrees, right? Follow. All right, so. Whoops, too far. So I feel like I ought to be able to use some sort of trig function. My goal is I want to find out something about the tension, right? And the other side of the triangle I know something about is the vertical side of the triangle. So which trig function should I use? Sine, right? So it looks to me like the sine of 40 degrees is going to equal opposite, which is 1 sixth of Fg over hypotenuse, Ft, right? All right, now the question says, and I quote, what is the ratio of the tension to the weight? What is the ratio of the tension to the weight? So I'm looking for 
So I guess there's a couple of ways you could do this. The question that I want to find out, I want to figure out this, the ratio of the tension to the weight. Does that make sense? So how do we do that? Let's see. Well, let's multiply both sides by 6, right, to get rid of the 1 sixth. So if I take this equation and multiply both sides by 6, I get 6 times the sine of 40 equals Fg over Ft. So how do I find Ft over Fg? It's going to be 1 over that, right? And there's your answer. Does that make sense, you guys? Problems with it? Okay. And then B says, if the insect straightens his legs out, so instead of him doing this, he does this, is that going to increase or decrease the tension? Is it easier to hold yourself on a monkey bar like this or like this? No. Like this. This is way easier, right? Because doing this, you've got horizontal components that are wasted, right? That's why, that's why chin-ups are hard to do, or pull-ups, or whatever that one's called, right? Good? Or no? It's the reason why the tension in the high wire is so big, right? Because you've got wasted horizontal components. Why, why would diamond push be harder than that form? Oh, oh, yeah. There we go. Right? Well, all right. Everybody good? Yes. Shh. No, not at all. Shh, guys, quiet, please. For the insects' weight, like you're finding like, the ratio, why do you find the force of gravity? Uh, so, what's the definition of weight? Uh, force of gravity times. Uh, no. It, definition of weight is force of gravity. Like, you're done there. Not acceleration of gravity. I think you're missing, mixing up force of gravity and acceleration of gravity. Follow? So the acceleration of gravity is 9.8. Multiply by, that, by the mass, and it gives you the force of gravity. But that force of gravity is called weight. OK? So in this problem, when it talks about weight, there's your weight, Fg. Good? Is everybody good with that? OK. All right, any other questions on number six? OK, or whatever number that was. Four. All right, number five. Uh, what should you do to the angle, you guys? Oh, no, 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 sorry. What should you do to the magnitude of F2? Let's see, you're going to decrease the angle. All right, so it looks like we've got to go over this. All right, so look. So here's our F1, theta. Here's our F2. All right? So right now, shh, it's moving at a constant velocity, right? So what that means is the x component of this force has got to equal what? F2, right? You guys see that or no? OK. So. Now, it says we are to decrease angle theta, do, 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 do. but we want the velocity to stay constant. So if you decrease theta, what's that going to do to my x component? It's going to embiggen it, right? It's going to make it bigger. And so to keep the velocity constant, that means I need to make my f2 bigger to compensate. Follow? OK, that probably should not have been the last question because it was. All right, are we good? OK, cool. All right, should we do the drag force problem? Yes. Yeah. All right, so here's the deal. I came to a conclusion this morning as I was driving to work and thinking about these problems. All right, I, I want to do these problems now because it, it, A, it fits into this chapter. Uh, B, I want you guys to get as much early exposure to these types of problems as we can. Okay? And over the last couple days, I've seen you guys drowning in calculus, just being like, what the bleep is going on? We got these integrals. I don't know what's going on. Okay? So here is what I'm going to do. I, I, I still want to assign these problems. But what I want you guys to do is I want you to solve them far enough to where you set up the integral. Okay? Just get the integral set up. And then as you go through your calc class, whatever calc you're in, AB or BC or WX or whatever you've got, whatever calc class you're in, 
as you go through the year, you're going to get more exposure to taking integrals. Okay? To me, the hard part, no, I shouldn't say that. The physics part of these problems is setting up that integral. Okay? So let's get you guys to the point where you can set up the integral. All right? Then in your math class, you'll learn how to take the integrals. And by the time we're practicing for the AP test in March or April, you guys will have had more exposure to those integrals. And you'll know how to set the problems up for me. And you'll know how to take the integrals from McConaughey or whoever your math teacher is. Right? Can I say that right? Yeah. All right. And then everything will fall into place. Does that seem, does that help alleviate some anxiety a little bit? Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know how to do this. Yeah. All right. So with that in mind, let's run through problem number three just to the point where we set up the integral. OK? So here we go. Sorry. <laughs> Had to be done. I was losing, losing stuff. All right. Um, all right. I was trying to say, not have to say my pants were falling off on the video, and then I think my effort to circumvent that made it worse. Okay, um, <laughs> all right, so number three. So first of all, the wording on this is a little bit awkward. It says a sled of mass m is sliding horizontally across a frictionless surface at t equals zero with a velocity v naught. It experiences a drag force of magnitude blah, 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 blah. Notice, it doesn't say there's anything pushing it forward. So don't assume there's anything pushing it forward. It's just a sled sliding along, and drive force is going to slow it down. OK? All right, in working with people on this before and after school, and I think five or six of you have come in and talked to me at one point or another about these problems, you have to make a free body diagram. Have to. You can't solve these problems without going through the process of doing that. Yes. Um, do you know what you should do that I think might actually really help? Is What's that? Put out a work route answer to to, to, to the problems? Yeah, okay. online. Just so like you can like follow them and like sure. work with it. So. I can do that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I can do that for sure. Yeah, and actually my goal today, guys, is fourth hour is to update this sheet and add in those new answers that I'm talking about where you just set up the integral. So you'll know if you're setting up the integral correctly. Yeah. And in the course of doing that, yeah, I'll, I'll do my work neatly. So and upload the video. No, upload the thing, yeah. Okay, all right, so here we go. So number three, a sled of mass m sliding horizontally. Here's our mass, or sled, mass m, sliding horizontally with a velocity of v naught. What forces are on it? Well, let's see, there's going to be gravity. I don't really care about gravity, though, because it's going to be canceled out by a normal force. And there's a drag force slowing it down. Good? Step one, make a free body diagram. Good? All right, step two, come up with an expression that relates the total of all of the forces, net force, to Newton's second law. So I'm going to write a dumb thing here. Net force equals net force. All right, so why did I do that? I want you guys to understand that there are, there are two ways you can think about net force. Option one is Newton's second law. Option two is the total of all the forces. Make sense? Yes. All right. So now what I'm going to do is the problem told us that the drag force was kV squared, right? Incidentally, real quick side note that you're going to be like, why is he bringing this up right now? Lowercase k's, I'm going to always write cursive because later on we're going to have capital k's and I want them to be distinguishable. All right, because we'll have problems where we've got lowercase k's and capital k's in the same problem. Oh, what does it stand for? Here? No, the capital k. Uh, kinetic energy. Oh, darn it. <laughs> Why? Curvature. Oh, OK. Gotcha. All right, so, um, so my recommendation, you guys, is try to get in the habit now of making those k's cursive. Or come up with some other way in which you can distinguish from lowercase k's and capital k's. All right, anyway. so. So that's that, right? Now, you need to artificially check your signs. The problem tells you k is constant, v squared is constant, but since the box is moving that way and the drag force is this way, my acceleration is going to be negative, so I need a negative in here somewhere. 
Good? All right. So everybody get up to here. All right. So now, uh, we, we, what's the next step, I guess? Replace A with DBDT. You could divide by mass. Those of you that said divide by mass, yes, that's fine too. All right, but at some point, you've got to replace A with DBDT. So here we go. M times DBDT equals negative KB squared. So that's part A. Set up a differential equation that you could use to solve the thing. There you go. That's part A. Good? Yep. All right, now. Part B, as it's worded on the sheet, says something along the lines of, now solve that to come up with an expression for the velocity at time t. Okay? So to do that, you have to integrate. All right? So again, to be clear, I'm not going to expect you to take the integral. I'm going to expect you to set up the integral. All right? The process is always the same. <clears throat> the first thing you need to do is rewrite your derivative, this dv dt, so that it's not a fraction. So how do I unfractionify this? Multiply by dt. Okay, that's always going to be your next step. Once you've got this dv dt, multiply by dt. So let's do that. So now I've got m times dv equals negative kv squared dt. That's your next step. Everybody good up to that? Yes. All right. Now you want to get all the v's on the dv side. And if there are any all the t's on the dt side, there never will be. Good? Yep. So how do I get this V onto the side? Divide. Divide by it, right? So now I'm looking at M dV over V squared equals negative K dT. Good? Any questions? All right. Now, next step, integrate. Okay. Again, I'm not going to expect you to do the integration, but I want you to set it up. So, integrate both sides. Good? All right, now, the next thing you, you do, you don't have to do this, but I think it makes your life easier. Anytime you're multiplying by a constant in an integral, you can pull the constant out. So I'm going to take this m as a constant, right? So I'm going to pull that constant out then and rewrite this as m times the integral of dv over v squared. And what can I pull out on the other side? Negative the negative k times the integral of dt. All right, so we're 99% of the way there. Here's the last thing I expect you to do. Our goal is to come up with an expression for the velocity at a certain time the velocity at the end of t seconds, OK? So I need to take this indefinite integral and rewrite it so that it's definite, OK? So in terms of time, what time does my time start at? Zero. Zero. And I want to know what the velocity is after a time of t seconds. Follow? Peter, you good? You said um? No? Somebody said um? Are we good? Malcolm, are you good over there? Everybody's happy? Yes. All right, over here. Now, shh, shh. for the corresponding t's, what are the associated velocities? In other words, at time zero, what's my velocity? V naught. V naught. Let me pause for a minute. I glossed over something that maybe isn't obvious. How did I know to use t's here? Because it's. Because it's in terms of t. That's what this dt tells us. This is saying, how much time do I want to integrate over? So I want to integrate over the first t seconds. And this is telling me, this dv here is telling me that I'm integrating over velocity as my velocity changes. Okay? And so at time zero, my velocity is v naught. And after t seconds, my velocity is v of t. There you go. If you can get it up to here, the rest is calculus that you will get experience with in your calc class. Is that manageable? For sure, probably. Maybe sure. 
inverse. Okay. Now, I will say this is the one integral that's not bad. You don't have to use logs. You just use the power rules. And if we were not running up with just 10 minutes left, I would do it real fast. But I want to make sure I talk real quick about inclined planes. All right. So questions here. All right. I, my goal fourth hour is to come up with a new version of this worksheet. And I'll, if I have time, I'll write out the detailed solutions for them also. Good? Cool. All right. Any questions? Nope. OK, cool. So I will, uh, if once I get that up, I will uh, send you a link to the new Google Doc with the homework. So you can go back and look at that if you want. All right? Everybody happy? All right. So do tomorrow, I want you to try number four and do worksheet 4.4. Okay? All right. So notes. All right. Inclined planes. So this is stuff you've done last year. There's only one new addition, but it's not bad. All right? So from this point forward, anytime you've got an inclined plane, these are the notes, you guys. So you've got this in your notes. So if I remember, if I believe that all of 4.4 is inclined planes, but no friction. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So usually when we set up our coordinate systems, we've got an x-axis that runs horizontally and a y-axis that runs vertically, right? Yes. But that doesn't really make sense to use that axis system when you're dealing with an inclined plane, because my motion is got not going to be either horizontal or vertical. It's going to be slanty, right? Slanty, it's a technical term. It means like this. Uh, all right? So what we do is we take our coordinate system and we rotate it and we rename them. All right? And I'll, yes. And we, need, we, re we rename them. All right? So this axis, I always call the parallel axis. And this axis, I always call the perpendicular axis. All right? Some, just so you guys know, when you get to college next year, some professors will still call this x and still call this y. Some of them will call this x prime and y prime, as in like, oh, we've rotated a little bit. So here's my new x-axis and here's my new y-axis. Whatever. It's all the same thing, just different names. Cool? Right, yeah. So it's, it's totally arbitrary, which is why I like using parallel and perpendicular. Yes? And this, um, couldn't you also just set up like the normal, like what it actually not normal, I can't say that. The, the curve, like just the use. The actual one and then use that for like angles? You can, yeah. Uh, it gets ugly because then you have to split up every vector instead of just some of them, but it works. Okay. Cool? All right, so everybody get up here. All right, so here it says a box is placed on a frictionless inclined plane inclined at 30 degrees. Make a free body diagram and find the acceleration. So the idea is. Here's my force of gravity, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, it does not lie along either of my two coordinates axes, right? So what do we do? Do you guys remember? You split it up into components, right? Now, here's the deal. I'm not going to go through the geometry. You're welcome to do it on your own. It turns out that whatever, now let me do it in a different color so it stands out. It turns out that whatever this angle here is, this angle here is the same thing. Okay, so here's real quick why. Look, if this is theta, then this, I don't want to mark it because it'll, but this little angle here is going to be theta minus 90, right? Yep. But then this angle is 90 again, so this is this minus 90 again, which gets you back to theta. Cool? All right, so notice that triangle, how I drew it. This side here is not horizontal. It's parallel to the parallel axis. So here are the two sides of the triangle. This component is called the perpendicular component because it is along the perpendicular axis. And this side is called the parallel component because it is along the parallel axis. Good. All right, and then a little bit of trig shows us that this perpendicular component is just Fg times the cosine of theta. And this per parallel side is Fg times the sine of theta. Please be careful here. I see students flip-flop these all the time. 
because I think the natural knee-jerk reaction is to think of the parallel one as being your x-axis. And usually you use cosine to find the x-axis. But here we use sine to find the parallel. So just be careful about that. Follow? Yep. Yeah. All right. Now, when I make free body diagrams, I'm not going to draw this mess. All right? I'm just going to remember, oh, gravity. It's not along either of my axes. I've got to split it up into components. All right? So I'm almost immediately, when I draw this mess, I'm going to just go, oh, here's my ramp. Here's my box. Instead of drawing one force of gravity, I'm going to draw the two components. So here's my FG perpendicular. Here's my FG parallel. Bless you. Does that make sense? Yes. If I was to mathematically add those two vectors up, what would I get? FG. Cool. All right, there's a third force that I'm, well, a second force. Normal force. Point for me. Which way does normal force go? This way, right? It prevents this perpendicular component from pushing the box through the ramp. Follow? These are supposed to be linear, anti-parallel. So they're equal? They are equal and opposite, correct. You could write that if you wanted. Did you just flip me off, Carl? No, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> totally looked like you went. <laughs> no, I really Wait, did you just flip it off? <laughs> 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 no. All right, are we good up to here? All right, so the nice thing, the nice thing is, in most problems, but not all of them, these two forces will just cancel each other out. Cool? So for this problem, let me switch colors. What's my net force going to be here, you guys? Just FG parallel, right? Because it's frictionless ramp, right? All right, so let's see. Newton's second law, sorry, tells me that net force is MA. And that's got to equal FG parallel. So how do I find FG parallel? FG sine theta, right? FG sine theta. We are almost done with this thing. Oops. Oh, no. Hi, Caramba. Hi, Caramba, indeed. OK, so are we good up to here? Yes. All right, uh, so we're almost done. We're trying to find the acceleration, right? That was the original problem, which I think I didn't read, so my bad. <laughs> All right, so we're almost there. What can I do with FG? That's, it's, what is FG equal to, you guys? MG. It didn't give us a mass. So this is MA equals negative MG times sine of theta. Why did I put the negative in? Because G is understood to be positive 9.8. And I know it's going to accelerate down the ramp. And I will usually use down the ramp as a negative direction. Cool? Oh, what happens? M's. M's cancel. So now I can find my acceleration. So for us, A is negative G times the sine of, was it 30 degrees in the problem? So you get negative G over 2. If you did not leave, put the negative in, that's fine. It just means you chose a different convention for your science. Darn it, I don't have time to do the last example I want to do. Um, all right, so are we good with that? All right, let me show you one quick last thing. I know the bell's going to ring in two minutes. Let me just show you one thing real fast. Um, all right, so there's the equations. We just talked through all that garbage. Um, all right. So this, I think you guys ought to be able to do this. This is nothing new. This is old school, all right? But jump to this one. It's the last example in this chunk of notes. It says, write an expression to determine the force needed to push the box, meaning that same box, up the ramp with an acceleration of A. Assume the force is parallel 
to the horizontal. Huh? Wait, what is What does horizontal mean, you guys? It means horizontal. All right, so check it out. Here's my ramp. Okay, automatically I can put in my FG parallel and my FG perpendicular, right? Now, I'm going to push, I'm going to try to get this thing going up the ramp at a constant velocity by applying a horizontal force of F. Okay, but the problem is that force doesn't lie along, doesn't lie along either of my axes, right? But it's no big deal, because check it out. If this angle here is theta, then I can take this force and split it up into two components. One of them is parallel to the axis, and the other one is, oops, the other one is perpendicular to the axis. Here's my right angle, and here's theta again. Uh, we will get there eventually. All right, so that's how you deal with those forces. All right, I think there are two like that on the homework. At least try them. Always. It gets ugly, but so the idea is this is adding to your FD parallel. It's going to increase their normal force, right? Yeah, I was thinking of it as two independent parallels. So just a question. Normally, do people approach like? Hang on one second, Zach. Go ahead. So like, if you're going down a ramp, would someone kind of think of that as someone positive displacement uh, because you're free? It's arbitrary. It's arbitrary. Okay. It's arbitrary. It you need to pick a direction and just work with it. I, for whatever reason, I, I, I try very, very hard to be consistent about down is negative, up is positive. Unless you get into a weird situation, but usually that's right. Cool. Nope, not at all. It's arbitrary. Uh, Carlo.